Why does this cooler exist? I mean, I'm telling you guys, this unit does not make any sense. Hey guys, Hardware Hound here, and we are looking at the Silverstone Argon Series AR08 CPU cooler. And so, yeah, I mean, like I said, right off the bat, what on earth? You know, you look at this cooler and it does not make any sense to exist in the market. And you're probably, now you're either one of two things right now. You're either like, yeah, I agree with you and I probably know why, or you might be questioning why the heck I'd say that. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of background information before we dive into that question. So the AR08 is a 92 millimeter fan CPU cooler. And so that right there should be one of the big things that's gonna cue you into what's going on. 92 millimeters is a lot smaller than 120 millimeters or 140 millimeters. Um, so as that stands, we're also gonna have a much smaller heat sink unit in order to accommodate the smaller fan. Well, the smaller the heat sink is, the harder it is to get the heat that's coming off of your processor to go into the air. Now, that said, we do have heat pipe direct contact um, for the processor, which is supposed to help, but I mean, I've tested enough CPU coolers by now that I've never been able to tell a difference. You know, in the end, the design is the design, and if it's good, then it cools well. And size matters when it comes to especially air towers. Even liquid cooling size matters with like the radiator. So yeah, we don't have any fancy design here. I mean, yeah, we've got the blue and white fan. That's a Silverstone trademark, but otherwise bare copper pipes, aluminum fins, it's not flashy, it doesn't look great. So we can go, all right, let's go to some testing results. Maybe there's a surprise in there and we're not gonna find anything. Because what's gonna happen is, is that stock cooling, we found out that this guy is the lowest, the bottom run of my list of CPU coolers. And as you know from my CPU cooler hierarchy chart, <laughs> I have tested a crap ton of coolers. So for this guy to be at the lowest, that would be you know, kind of a bad thing, except, you know, it's smaller. So we expect it to be lower, so it's not that bad. And compared to a stock aluminum cooler, which was, in this case, the Wraith Spire, I was so glad I got a hold of that thing to have for reference. Yeah, it was way better than the Wraith Spire, though, when you start getting into something like an 8-core Ryzen chip at 9,500 some odd watts. So, I mean, it's not a bad performer. Noise levels are you know, kind of tolerable level, but not extremely high. Not silent either though. So we've got, I would say a good noise level for a smaller fan though, but you know, still a little bit higher noise level. Overclocking wise, obviously we're going to not get much out of it, but by not much, I mean, this is the only cooler I have that fills my level one tier, which is great to have a cooler to fill my level one tier, but you don't really want to brag about a cooler filling your level one tier. So that brings us back to that question, why? Like Silverstone, what are you doing? Why do you make a cooler that basically cannot cool as well as 120 millimeters or 140 millimeters, and yet, well, okay, size. We want it to fit in a small case. Okay, but if we just get ourselves a nice low profile cooler that is right up close to the motherboard and everything, we could also get one of those low profiles that has a larger fan and would probably cool better. So why would we want this? Actually guys, I've been baiting you the whole time because there is probably a really good reason. It's up to you whether you agree with me or not, but I actually found a very, very good reason. And I hope Tony over there at Silverstone isn't ready to like chop my head off. So no, seriously, actually this cooler makes a ton of sense, but within the realm of Silverstone products. If you go to Silverstone's product page and you scroll down at the bottom, they have a list of recommended parts to go with this guy. And what you'll see is a lot of micro and mini ITX cases, but not just any. Yeah, they do show some uprights, but all of them are home theater cases. And what does a home theater case do? It sits flat on like the, you know, shelf or on the stand for your TV so that it doesn't take up space and can easily slide into like say a compartment or something. Well, 
What happens when you do that though? If you turn the whole motherboard from being on its side to being on its back, or yeah, to being on its so it's a, back, yep, and you have a low profile cooler, what's gonna happen? You're blowing the heat down into the motherboard and it's not, it's leaving it less chances to go anywhere because heat as, as natural convection happens tends to want to rise. Well, if your board's upright, then it kind of will just help exhaust it out of the top of the case. But as you can see, if it's down there, you might start getting a little bit of like a convection going on and you start recirculating heated air. You don't want to do that. Silverstone doesn't want you to do that. Now, but we still have this problem, right? We can't just put a 120 millimeter tower in a micro ATX slimmer design home theater case. So this guy makes all the world of sense because you're gonna wanna push that heat either out the back or out the front or out the side, but you don't wanna push it down. You wanna either push it straight up or out the sides. And this guy makes perfect sense for that. It's going to fit in those Silverstone cases that are designed to handle it and has that lower clearance. Because as you can see, those some of those cases are a little bit bigger as far as home theater cases are concerned, but they're still pretty thin compared to say cases with a full 120 millimeter fan in the back. But at the same time, it's not just shooting the heat right back down in the system and creating any kind of convection effect. In the end, maybe it doesn't make a huge amount of difference and it just wouldn't matter. But Silverstone takes cooling and airflow extremely seriously and they don't even take little unit, little, little details like that for granted. So guys, I hope that question, if anything, maybe the question perked your interest. And even if it didn't, I hope the answer was satisfying. And even if it wasn't, I don't know what else to do. I could try to give away free cars. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna happen. So that's all I got for you guys. I really wanted to delve into that, but if you do want full details and a detailed review and look at this cooler, I have a written review on my website, hwhound.com. Link is in the description below. So you can check that out, get you the full details there. Um, guys, if you like this video, of course, like and subscribe. That always helps out. But if you really like what I'm doing too, just watch the content. You know, don't try to just skip through the video. Um, YouTube is very much likes audience retention. And so when you stick around and check out the content that's on the video, that actually helps out creators a ton, not just me. So, you know, if you guys don't mind sitting around and watching me for a few minutes, feel free to do that. So yeah, as always, comment section wide open. Leave some comments below. There's some I can get to, some I can't. But still, I've had some great, awesome community members here. Some of you guys who follow my channel, you've been, some, been awesome on answering questions. Keep it up. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Sorry, no free cars. That's, yeah, not gonna happen. I'll catch you later.